Welcome back to Recovery Raw. Good morning, everybody. Today is April 6, 2021. I haven't done a video in a little while. This will be um, episode four. Okay, this one is going to be about um, just where I'm at, I guess. A couple things I wanted to talk about. So, um, I said in the previous episodes that um, I entered a detox um, October 4th. So then last Sunday was Easter Sunday, and that was six months ago, um, as of Easter, that I entered the detox. So that was kind of symbolic for one. Um, you know, Easter this year was April 4th. Um, and I just wanted to share how um, the AA kind of works for me. So, you know, when I first came back into the program, um, I was put on to some Zoom meetings and, you know, everybody, you have to find what works for you and you have to balance that with, you don't know everything. I don't pretend to know everything. Um, but you know, I, you're going to like some meetings more than others for one. Um, and then it kind of just bubbles like off of that. Like I got put onto like four meetings or you can just find them yourself really. Anytime you need one, uh, thank God for Zoom. They're, they're always going 24 seven. All kinds of different meetings, men's meetings, gratitude meetings, find what works for you. I got put onto a couple of good ones, newcomers meetings. Um, I liked that one a lot at first. And, um, and then I found another group that I go to based out of California. And that's um, that's my favorite Zoom meeting. It's at 9.45 every morning. It's a great way to start the day. Great group of people. Um, starts the day with a positive mindset. All, again, great people that are supportive. Um, and have a lot of recovery time, a lot of knowledge. Um, but anyways, so then, you know, over time, I'm going to these Zoom meetings. Then I discovered that there are live meetings. I didn't even know at first. And then I started going to these live meetings. I was invited to um, this one group in Woburn, in my hometown, Monday and Friday. And, you know, I keep going and, and I'm talking to people there. And then I get invited to um, Tuesday in Woburn, Wednesday in Woburn. Um, and it just keeps growing like that. And then, you know, so the, the ones that are most, that I get the most out of is the Zoom meeting at 9.45 every day. Again, it starts my day off right. And then um, the home group is Monday, Friday. Uh, people that are most of my age, um, great group of people, you know, a lot of love, support, uh, a lot of recovery time. Um, and it's right there too. So, pretty good group too, probably about 20 to 30 people on average. So, um, and then, you know, going to these live meetings, I had met a couple other people and um, they invited me to, on Easter, really the coolest meeting I've ever been to. It was on top of a mountain and it started at 6 a.m. And um, so, on Easter, we got to watch the sunrise and um, it was exactly six months, and I took a I took two pictures. I took a picture of the sunrise, and I took a picture of um, Boston in the background. And the moon was really cool, so I took a picture of the moon. It was a half moon, and um, it was a gratitudes meeting. It was a men's meeting. Um, really cool way to start the day. I got a lot out of it, and. Oh, and then when I'm at that meeting, somebody else took a picture of the whole group and I asked him to send me the picture. So he sent me the picture of me and all the guys in it. And um, then he invites me to a meeting on Wednesday, another outside meeting. So that's kind of how it works. It just keeps bubbling, like I said. Um, and you meet more and more people and um, all good people in AA I've met, 90% of them. So, oh, so then after Easter, I mean, after um, the meeting that I went to Easter morning, I, I also went to that 945 meeting and we do the daily reflections. It's out of the book, recovery-based, every day, um, 
something to reflect on. This one on April 4th happened to be talking about the phases of the moon. And then it dawned on me that it was a half a moon. I took a picture and it's a half a moon. And um, yeah, just real symbolic to me. You know, I had a half a year, it was a half a moon. Um, I was born into Christianity, I'm a Christian. Um, the sun is rising, got to watch the sunrise. Just a really cool day. So, where was I going with that? So yeah, that's that's how this program is working with, for me. And then, um, like last night, you know, you have a lot of people that, I went to another meeting and last night there was, um, there's a lot of people with a lot of time clean and, um, you know, I, I strive for that, of course, but then there's, on the flip side, there's people coming in, you know, straight out of detox, detoxing from benzos, just hurting and in pain, and um, that hits you too. It's like, oh yeah, I don't want to feel like that again. So, I feel like I'm on the right path. Um, you know, and to talk about outside of AA, I also see, um, I picked a couple counselors and I wanted to talk about how having a counselor is almost like having a sponsor in the sense that when you, you have to, again, you have to find what works for you. When you find a counselor, okay, in order for it to work, to be the most effective, you have to somewhat trust that counselor you have to be able to confide in this counselor you have to feel that this counselor is has your best interest at heart um and, and you get something out of you know counseling sessions with your counselor and if it doesn't work then you have to find another one okay luckily i have a good sponsor and, and it and it works the same way with the sponsor like you have to, it has to be a good fit in order for, otherwise, just like the counselor, you're gonna waste your time if, if you go into counseling sessions with somebody you don't get along with or there's no connection. So, the counseling, the, uh, with the sponsorship, it's like, you know, that's real awkward for a man like myself to ask another man to work with you in your recovery and, but, you know, is you, we grow in the uncomfortability and as awkward as that can be at first, it's what we do in the program, which is cool because, and what that's all about is like, you know, this is somebody that I'm in constant communication with. They see what I'm going through, um, you know, a couple times a week we'll talk or whatnot. Um, you know, this guy has decades clean so he has some uh, knowledge and wisdom for himself that he shares with me. And when I, so he knows what's going on with me because we have constant communication and when I have some kind of issue or problem, he's able to see it from a different perspective and help me to, you know, walk in the right direction. So that's kind of how the sponsorship works in, in, and you know, he's gonna bring me through the steps. He has more than a year clean time and he's willing to invest some time in me and, and it works both ways respectively. So, and then like with these counselors too, um, I found with the best ones will be in recovery themselves. You know, they're qualified, they understand more than, even my father would say, you can read all the books in the world, but unless you been through it yourself, you don't truly know. And I actually have one counselor now who she's not in recovery, she was never an addict, but she's really, really good, so I kept her. Um, but she, she's probably one of the best counselors I've, I've ever had. But a lot of the counselors that I've had previously, um, some of them, the best ones I think have been in recovery themselves. So yeah, I guess this message is about, you know, find what works for you. Don't pretend, balance that with, don't pretend to know it all. Get connected in the program. We all 
support each other. Like this guy that was coming off benzos out of detox. Um, I could relate to him so much. We sat and talked for like 15 minutes after the meeting. We all go through the same shit. It's the same shit. At that stage, you just get to fight through it in, in, in early detox. And that's like the best of... That's like the best advice I can give. I couldn't, I mean, if you could wean yourself off slowly but surely, that would be the most ideal way to get off of something. But for an addict like myself, I could never, I could never do it that way. It was, it's all or nothing. So that's why I had to submit myself to a lot of pain. And, um, you know, Damn, the benzo thing is tough because with no sleep and everything, that makes you go kind of crazy. And I, I just had to tell him, like, what I did, how I handled it was, you know, after, like, five days of not sleeping, you know, after, like, three days, I'm like, okay, I'll be able to sleep. Tonight's four, the fourth night, so I'll definitely sleep. Nope. Fifth night, nope. And then, like, so I, I found myself, you know, checking out, like, um... On, on the internet, how I can sleep better. And um, I just told him, like, if if you still have the drugs in your system, you know, you wanna try to flush it out of your system, drink a lot of water, eat healthy, drink um, herbal teas and whatnot, get it out of your system. But then your brain, it's gonna take a, a while for your brain to heal. And um, what's gonna help you sleep was like, if you force yourself to exercise. When I was exercising, at the beginning, you know, I'm talking like walking a mile, walking a half a mile away from my house and a half a mile back to my house. So walking a mile total was exhausting. And I, and I still was having trouble sleeping. And then like reading at night was really helpful. Um, not looking at the computer screen, phone screen, an hour or two before you go to sleep. Um, all kinds of little tricks. But yeah, so Wish you all, uh, I wish you all a good day, and um, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, give me ideas in the comments as to what I should make a video on next. Thank you.